Hi and welcome. This is Cousin Russ. Uh, the, a couple of videos ago, I showed you how to replace all place names that were not uh, correct. This time, I want to take a couple of examples of place names uh, that I know that I need to change uh, and or resolve them. For example, this entry right here has eight people associated with it, and this location has one and this location has two. But if you look at the little pinpoint, they're the same place. So how do I resolve that? Uh, this was a file that uh, was created before we had a place name standardization. So that's why it says, has the term township and county in it. The current version of Family Tree Maker uses Bing maps, and if you look down to the lower left-hand corner here, it says Bing. So these maps are created by Microsoft Bing product. So the place name authority, that is the places that show up here, are from Bing, and they are current place names. And I will deal with her historical place name at a, at a later show. But I want to resolve these, get these three into one place. So I go over here and you see in the upper, upper right hand corner there is a check mark or a question mark. <laughs> that same place will appear uh, in a for a specific person when the place is uh, not resolved. So I'm going to click on that link and Family Tree Maker is going to try to find this location with the word township and county in it. And that's what's here, but this is the correct format. If you take the word township out and the word Bucks County, or take the word county out and add USA, and I will just say that this is a country name. Uh, which may be obvious to us, uh, but there's a way to control that in what you see on the screen and what's in reports. Uh, for best use of this map, I have found that in the data entry that uh, that you use USA. So I just selected it, and then I'm going to replace what I have up here with what a family tree maker found and I said replace oh I should point out that before I did this I backed up my file as usual I didn't do that because I just tell you that I did it <clears throat> so that was one of them now I want to go down here to the next example that had two and this time Buckingham did not have the word township it uh, but it did have county so I'm going to do the same thing and it's it found the Bucks County because Bucks County is still in my database. I don't want that. So I need to locate Buckingham Bucks County Bucks without the county, which is just below it. But this entry that it sh is showing up here is already, is still in my database, which will be cleaned up here shortly. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to replace that for these two people. Now you see what's happened here. I now have I already had a couple people in this location, but now I have 20 people. So now I can see all 20 people that were in fact had a a, a an entry in that same place. So let's go up here again. Here's another one, and you'll see you probably can't see that, but there's an extra comma in here when I data, did the data entry a long time ago. So I go through the same process, and there's one person, so I'm going to replace that. So now I have 21 people. So I have this is the standardization of gig. Uh, that's available in this program where you get the same places, uh, everybody in the same place that had an event in that same place uh, showing up in the map at the same time. <clears throat> so that is that. Now, 
I will, there's a, a another entry up here that I'm going to have to clean up, but I will do that at a different locate, a different time, because it's a little more complicated. The other thing I want to do really quickly is to show how I handle uh, a, an address. I have an address for for right here. It's uh, in Levittown, Pennsylvania, and it's got a zip code. Well. Let's see if we can't handle that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is use the section up here for historical name, address, church, and cemetery. So that is telling us what can go in this field. And the fields are delimited by a comma. So if I click this button, what it's going to do is take that street address and move it into the upper uh, box. And I can put it back down just with a down arrow, but this is now putting this address into this location. It's still showing the zip code, but I'm going to I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit Control X. I have Control X, so the zip code is on my clipboard uh, for the computer. So I'm going to replace Levittown. Now, Levittown is in fact in Bucks County. So I'm going to select that and replace. So now in Levittown, I have that address. I want to put the zip code into the address field by clicking here and doing the plus sign and click on the address and click go and it's going to take me to that person's address field and when the screen fills up I'm going to paste the zip code into the uh, description. Now <clears throat> You will notice on the left-hand side, I have a uh, the padlock, which means that the address fact is protected or privatized. You can see that with the padlock. You can change it by clicking the down the options menu. I have it marked as private because I don't want the address field be out. If I put this tree online, which it is, I don't want that address to be on the internet. It's in my file, my program. And if I want to do all facts with a specific name, I click on edit. I click on manage fact, address, properties, by default, I hadn't done this, which is why I'm demonstrating it. Uh, by default, anytime you use the address fact, it's going to be default, and I'm going to click OK. So any any new facts that come in with the birth date, or I'm sorry, with the address fact, it's going to show up uh, as private. And I, what I wanted to do is also show you on this screen, which is the people workspace, the person view, if you see this icon on the on the place name, that means that it's not uh, has not been resolved. So I will I will do that later. I'm not going to take your time to do that, but I will clean up my database. But I wanted to show how I. Um, handle that. Now, why do I take the time to do that? Well, let's say, and I have another file that I'll demonstrate later, but the reason why I do that, I, if I were to go to Bucks County, Pennsylvania today or tomorrow, I now, by clicking on this location at the county level, I can see that 31 people have had an event in Bucks County. So I can click on print and print page result, print place usage report, and you can't see that on my screen, uh, but it's it's there uh, 
there's a, an icon that will let you print that place. So here is a report that I can take with me, and it's cr being created right now, and it has a the list of people who had an event in uh, Bucks County, and apparently the report, oh, there it is. I just didn't wait long enough. So here is a report of everybody who had uh, an event in Bucks County. I can see who had it, who lived in that address. I can who else lived in Levittown, and that was the only person in Levittown. But there's people in Buck, uh, Buckingham Township, Bed and Salem Township. But if I click on the next level hierarchy level up in at the county level, I can see who had an event in the location. So I showed you how to resolve a single place name and and how to how I handle address. I hope that's uh, I'm going to do another video shortly on how why I spend so much time dealing with this map uh, feature of the place field because there's a couple really nice features and uh, of, it shows me hopefully we'll share with you why I spend so much time and, and the advantage of taking some time to use the place name authority that is within Family Tree Maker. Thank you. Have a good day.